how he behaves by I'll call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lecture and they will present the application to us. After they have presented the application, there will possibly be questions or discussions among the board members and staff. Once we're satisfied, we understand that part uh, portion of the presentation. Then I will open the floor for anyone here that is in support or the applicant would like to give us any additional information. Once the applicant or whoever may be in support has given us the information they'd like to take under advisement, there could be questions and discussions among board members. When we have heard from that side, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or have questions about what is being asked. In the essence of the time, we have multiple people here. Please have one person or a couple of people at the most come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the opposition or questions that you would like answered. I ask that instead of having a lot of folks come up one after another and give us the same information three and four and five times, if you feel like you have information that has not been presented to us that you feel is pertinent and would like us to talk about it, please come forward. If you've already heard your concerns aired, please don't stretch us out by giving it to us again. Once we have heard from opposition, there will probably be questions and or discussions among board members. Once we have heard from both sides, we normally will render a decision here today. However, it is in the bylaws. If we feel like questions have not been answered or parties need to talk to try to resolve issues, we do have the authority to postpone action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. If you have not signed in, I know you've heard us say it several times, if you've not signed in in the back, please sign in for us so you'll know that you're here. The first case is a Lowndes County case, VAR 2016-02, Coventry, 4052 Mulligan Road. Ms. Carmella, you have the show. Good afternoon, everyone. My first case uh, before this afternoon is a request for a variance. Um, this will be a residential subdivision consisting of about 36 lots off of Mulligan Road. The developer is requesting two variances um, to our plan development requirements. Plan developments are master plan developments. Um, basically, you, you get the zoning and what you're proposed to do, that's what you're stuck um, with, with developing. In this case, our plan development requirements um, have a set of standards, and the developer is requesting variances to two of the standards. Um, the first standard is to the location of plan developments. We require plan developments to be located off of collector or arterial road systems, which are your more busier roads. And Mulligan Road is considered on the therapy plan as a local residential street. Um, of course, the county engineer, Mulligan Road, functions as a collector road. It connects Bemis to Old Pine Road, and the traffic um, counts along that road qualifies it for a collector, but it hasn't been placed on the therapy plan as a collector, but we suspect that in our next update. The second variance is to the setback requirement. We require the exterior boundary of plan developments to have a 30-foot setback requirement. Initially, the applicant was quest requesting a 20-foot um, setback uh, variance, but he has since reduced that and is now requesting 24 feet, which staff can support. Um, with both variances, staff felt very comfortable with um, recommend recommending approval and ultimately has recommended approval for both variances. Discussions and questions from anybody on the board. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this? Is the applicant here that would like to speak on behalf? Is there anyone here in support that would like to speak? 
Does anyone here that has opposition to this request or anyone has questions about what is being requested? I have a question, sir. Please come to the lectern and give me your name and address for the record. My name is Kenneth Manuel. I live at 3555 Turkey Truck. You know, let me directly west this uh, wonderful land development, you can call it. Um, I lived there since 1990. Uh, I dirt roads, I roads. Traffic was my concern. But let's back up a minute. The housing, uh, development area, 36 residential lots. How large are the lots? What size are the homes? It makes a difference on who lives there. Uh, the next question would be the <coughs> traffic going in and out of Cherokee Trail adjacent to Mulligan Trail, uh, Mulligan Road. Um, right now, uh, I think the speed limit for that Mulligan road is 35 miles an hour residential not posted. Now there's a lot of people with new development north of it and um, beautiful homes, beautiful uh, area. The speed limit is not monitored. I live right off that road and I'm a different sheriff at Niles County Sheriff's Department. I don't want to cause anybody any hard feelings, but people jog, walk, the kids uh, walk their dogs, go up and down that highway, and people go flying by. Should this development happen, um, we'd like to see a speed limit limited to minimum 25 miles an hour residential area, if good. Um, again, the housing, 36 residential zones or uh, houses, lots, probably no houses. Um, what kind of price range are they going to be in? It will be various for people living in that area. Uh, again, we don't have any information as far as the house sizes or prices. Mm -hmm. uh, it apparently will pass the code for that area as far as lot size and house size, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Uh, as far as the question of traffic and fast traffic, that would be something that Lowndes County Engineering would have to address as far as changing speed limits or contacting the county commission or whoever handles that. That would not be something that our board can handle. Okay. Uh, if it is granted, my suggestion would be to touch base with uh, Lowndes County Engineering to start with and request the procedure to have the speed limit adjusted or verified or whatever they may need to do for that. Very good, sir. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else here? Sir, did, did that pretty much answer the questions that you had? Right now, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Any other opposition? Anybody have anything to say? Ms. Carmelo? On the setback, is there anything unique about this property that would make it special by these that setback? Is there a, something that they can't, or is it just because they want to fit this many lots on? Um, basically, they want to you know, fit that many lots. Um, we can, uh, without a variance, grant an administrative waiver of six feet, which is right at 24. Um, so this would, this would be within about what you could do with those Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
next case is case VAR 2016-03 Southers. That case has been withdrawn by the applicant. If you are here concerning that case, nothing will be heard on this case unless the applicant reapplies at a later point. At this point, everyone would be notified immediately. The next case is VAR 2016-04 Joshua Restoration Ranch, 5808 McDonald Road. Ms. Carmella, you have the floor. Yes, sir. And this is another variance request before you. This request is for variance to the standards that the UODC calls for for group personal care homes. This property is located off of McDonald Road, consists of about 146 acres, and is on the RA, Residential Agriculture. Group personal care homes are allowed in RA zoning districts, so as long as you can meet the standards. In looking at the standards on your staff report, there is one that they are having or requesting relief to, and that's to the site location. We require group personal care homes to be located on collector or arterial road systems. McDonald Road is not considered a collector or an arterial. It is an unproved dirt road and classified on their plan as a residential street. Subject property is located in a rural area. It is a character area. It's rural residential, which consists of large state type lots. Staff looked at this. We did have some debate about this request, and basically it boiled down to whether the use was appropriate for this area. We didn't see anything that stood out that would be a negative effect to this area, and we ultimately recommended approval of this request. Do you know if there's any plans for that road as far as widening, paving, whatever? I did talk with the county engineer, and there are no plans to pave this road. It's not on the list. No widening, no improvement at all. Carmel, what is the difference in a county road and a prescriptive easement? Who actually owns that road? It is on the variable plan. It's classified as a prescriptive easement, meaning the county didn't go through any formal process to acquire a right-of-way. So essentially, you know, the residents on both sides of the street own to the middle. But the county maintains it? Yes, we do. So in order to pave this road or do any widening, they would have to come along there and acquire through monetary means. They would have to go through the acquisition process. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
That is correct. Whenever we have standards like these that we require use to be on a, a more busier road, the primary concern is neighborhood protection. Neighborhood protection. And the only other similar use um, is, is the sheriff's board's ranch, and that's of course located on Highway 122, which is a busy road. Um, and, and uses, you know, the standards, that's why this body is created, because it may be appropriate in some areas than it is for other areas. And our concern is not the zoning itself for, for the home. It's zoned in order for them to be able to put it out there, it's simply because of the road. That's correct. And per the zoning, This is, this is 144 acres, I think, being considered. It's about 146 acres. So they could go and put multiple homes like this out there on that property? There, this property in its entirety is limited to 15 clients. That's the max they can have as far as, you know, students or clients. If they want to go more than that, then you're talking about a rezoning. Okay. And we did speak with them about that. Okay. Carmela, is this road wide enough to put in two vehicles side by side, past each other? Um, it's possible. It's possible. I'm just asking for EMS purposes. 911. Yeah. That, that was my concern on a dirt road. But it says that here that planning, zoning, engineering, utilities, board of health, fire rescue, and inspections all said, okay, no, no concerns. That's correct. So, um, and I raised that question during our discussion, you know, safety, EMS, fire trucks. Even after a rainy, rainy, like we had this weekend, this, the fire trucks still going to be able to get down the road okay? According to the fire department, they're okay. okay with that. Any other questions? Any other discussion? I'd just like to make a statement. I don't know about the rest of the board, but I personally went out there today, and I would hate to know I had to pass the fire truck, because one of us would have been in the ditch. Yeah, any other questions? Any other discussion? Thank you, Carmel. Anything from the applicant? Yeah, you know, we may want to let, because I know everybody's got a lot of questions about what the actual program is. I may just want to let them go first and then I'll kind of answer what you think would be better if I just do it. Well, at least give us a little bit of what you're planning from your standpoint, yep. simply because that's the way we normally do it yep. and we want to try to follow it. Yeah, my name is Daniel Steven. Address is 2116 Wood Drive. Um, and I, I've been the liaison for Mr. Barker. I work with him, and I know uh, professionally and personally, uh, but I've been the one talking with the potential buyer for this property, Diane True, who is the CEO of Joshua Restoration Ranch. And uh, I think there, there's been a lot of things going around because, you know, I think some people have said, well, it's kind of like Boys Ranch, kind of like this or that. Um, and I want to say, first start off by saying what the program does or not based on everything she's told me. And she has several different programs around the U.S., one in Oklahoma, um, Ohio, and I believe one in Nevada, maybe. Um, there, there is a program that specializes in drug re uh, rehabilitation with veterans. Um, coming back, those who struggle with, you know, addictions and everything because of the war. Um, however, that is one in Oklahoma. This particular program here in Georgia this is based on what she's told me, what it's designed to do, is to take kids between the ages of 18 and 20 and uh, from the foster system who you know, either come from bad situations, don't know what they're doing in life, don't know where to go, and it's designed to bring them here uh, for six months, boys and girls, and uh, teach them how to work, get them plugged into colleges, get them plugged into churches, because this is a faith-based uh, program, teaching the Word of God, um, and so it takes kids from, you know, either the, the foster system's recommendation, kids that are in churches that have been in the foster system, and, you know, a pastor comes and says, hey, you know, this kid could use some direction. Um, there are background checks that are going to happen. Um, 
Now again, with, with that, you know, she said, you know, again, these kids are 18 and 20, so they, they're not being forced to be there. These are kids that want to change or, or, or want opportunity for something more. Um, they do go through background checks, and, and if a kid, you know, comes there, and this is based on what Diane's told me, and, and he's had a severe past, uh, recently got off drugs, or, you know, had criminal activity, he will not be accepted to it. Um, now, that, that's not to say that, you know, back when he was 16, he got caught doing something, but he's been fine since. And I think you know, any, any kid could have done that. Um, but based on what she's told me, you know, this isn't a detention center or a, a rehabilitation of any kind for criminals. Um, this, this is specifically for kids who don't have direction simply because their parents weren't there um, growing up. So that's uh, what the program is about. And, uh, that's what I have to say. Questions? Yeah. First question, 18 to 20 year olds, you assume the vast majority of them probably have driver's licenses. Are they going to be having their own personal vehicles in order to get to jobs or school or whatever? Or is this going to be transportation provided to limit the number of vehicles up down? It is going to be transported, uh, transportation provided. Uh, based on what she said, they'll have a shuttle and there'll also be, and again, they can have, they're going to be super busy out there. Um, there's going to be, you know, they're, they're going to have counselors, I guess. And, and they're, from what she told me, they're on a strict schedule. You know, you wake up at this time, you got breakfast at this time. They're, they're not just out there living on their own. They're, they're very uh, on a set schedule. But no, they will not have their own personal vehicles and they will not leave and go on their own personal time. Um, that is based on the schedule that they have for each individual person and it's provided by shuttle. She wanted to build a bunkhouse, um, and again, under the current you know zoning, um, it's allowed 15. So I think she was going to you know have five girls, five boys, and what she mentioned to me was having five full-time staff out there as far as supervision. Um, you know, there would probably be a cook out there, um, counselors, but that, that's what she had mentioned to me was five. Do you not? Do you know what made her select this area? She was originally, or she lived in Lake City, I believe, for three or four years, and she knows the area. She actually has a contact over there, um, and she's actually been looking for properties, re really in the southeast, and she found a property in Lake City. Um, however, I think from what she told me, the, the price was a little too much for what it was, and then she started looking for properties around the you know, North Florida, South Georgia area, and then this one came up, which... questions and your other discussions. I have a question. Yes. Um, in terms of selecting a piece of property, um, how many acres <coughs> of a piece of property would be the minimum size this could go? But based on what she's saying, because you know, if, if you're familiar with the property, um, the actual house resident area is actually half a mile from the road. There's a half a mile paved driveway um, going to the road. Yeah. Um, so you see, and, and you can see there's a warehouse back there, it's a construction company. Um, which, I mean, by, by the way, I was going to say about the trucks, and we drive dump trucks and, and back us down there all the time, and, and, I, and I've never had a problem with that. Now, he hasn't in 30 years, and I've, I've driven those trucks as well. Um, but yeah, so I, I would say, uh, are you saying as far as the residence goes? Uh, in terms of the facility, the smallest size of piece of property that could go on, it could go on five acres, ten acres, and this is a big piece. Property. How many acres does this facility need to be on? I mean, I, I know this is a lovely piece of property, right, right. and we're considering um, is this uh, variance appropriate? Just, just counting the usage, you know, right. is it appropriate to have a uh, so, by 
I, I think the reason she liked the property and what she told me, because she, she wants to keep it a word. You're not answering my question. Right, right. What's the smallest piece of property that it could be on? I would say for what she's talking about, I want to do 50. 50. Uh, 52. Yeah, I'd say 50 to 80. Yeah. She, she wants to use it. She wants to have horses. She wants to, have, she wants to keep it a working farm. Obviously, that keeps you know, the kids busy. She's going to have you know, kids mowing, doing pond straw. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of stuff to do out there I mean, as far as farm up for the property. And uh, mowing, a lot of mowing. Um, but yeah, she, she wants a working farm to, to have cattle on, to have horses on, to ride around. So I, I say that she may want the whole thing, honestly. So. Any other questions or discussions? Thank you very much. Uh, anything else? Don't want to add. Okay. Anyone that has questions or has opposition, I'd ask somebody, one person, please come to the lectern and give us your views. And then we'll go from there. If anybody else feels like they need to come forward, then we'll let you have your chance. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Lawrence. For those of you who don't know me, my address is 2700 Pebblewood here in the town. Uh, I am a lawyer here in Valdosta, uh, but I'm not here in my capacity as a lawyer. Rather, I'm here in my capacity as a manager of Frank Street Properties, LLC, which owns our family property that bounds on the north side. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, bounds on the north side of the property that is uh, in question. And from our standpoint, we have uh, three objections. And the, we're opposed in general uh, because we would contend that a group home in this area is not consistent with the surrounding area. These are single family residences up and down McDonald Road. These are farms. Uh, there's nothing similar to any type of group care facility. Uh, and that is not to speak to the merits of it. It may be a very good plan. This is just the wrong place for it. And the second point is, and this is, I think, what a lot of your questions were addressing, is that McDonald Road is not a suitable uh, road for this to be placed on because of the increased traffic counts. And something that I did not know until Carmela spoke is that I even question whether the board has the authority to make the change considering this is a privately, it sounds like it's a privately owned road, even though the county maintains it. If all the property owners own it to the middle of the road, uh, the, the board may not have the authority to make that variance uh, request or make that change. But assuming that it does, if you'll look, follow along with me in what I've provided for you, there on page one, you can see what the ULDC requires this to be, and it requires it to be on a collector or arterial road. And if you flip over to the next page, and I'm sure you know this, the uh, ULDC adopts the Lowndes County Thorough Thoroughfare Plan, uh, which has a definition for what arterial and collector roads are. And you can find that on page, beginning on page four. You can see the highlighted portions where it says what an arterial road is and what, and what a major collector road is and a minor collector road is. And first of all, all three of them are paved roads. That's the most important thing. Uh, as Carmela said, this is an unimproved dirt road. And you'll see the pictures in there in a minute. Um, it has to be two lanes wide. And the question came up by the board was, you know, was this big enough to get two vehicles through? Ms. Hobby's already said that she'd hate to have to pass the fire truck. And you'll see pictures in there of how far to the right someone has to get to actually pass. Um, on page five, the definition continues, and this is really kind of where the, the, uh, the rubber meets the road, so to speak. You see that an arterial road a collector and collector roads are, have to be roads that are capable of handling speeds of up to 60 miles an hour. The dirt road uh, speed limit out there is 35 miles an hour, and I would dare say that most of the people who live on there would say that's pushing it if you're going 35 miles an hour. The other thing, and this is what's important, is there at the bottom of page 5, you see where it says that the capacity for a arterial road is over 6,000 vehicles a day, 6,000 trips a day. A major collector is between three and 6,000, and a minor collector 
is between uh, 1,500 and 3,000. Now, if you'll turn the page, you'll see where I've highlighted McDonald Road from the list of dirt roads that the county has, and the traffic count is 108 trips per day. And I, again, I would defer to the actual residents on the road. I think they would say that's pushing it pretty high, too. That there are 108 trips up that road. So in essence, what's being asked, the board's being asked to do, this isn't changing, this isn't a variance. This is almost uh, a, it isn't, I mean, like a, this isn't comparing apples and oranges even. This is complaint comparing apples and turnips. Um, the, the roads that the, that the group home should be on are nothing at all similar to what's there. This is a widely different uh, type of road that you have. And of course, as it was, you know, it makes sense that the reason for that, and y'all had some questions about it, is for emergency situations. And if they're talking about putting, you know, five, five young men and five young women, um, five counselors, cooks, et cetera, that, that all, think about what happens if there's an emergency down there. How are you going to get ambulances, sheriff's department, uh, fire department down there. And I was kind of surprised to hear that the EMS, EMS signed off on this because I'm granted this is hearsay. But I spoke with Ashley Coombs, who's the head of the Shiloh Fire Department, which is the closest thing out there. And I asked him how he thought about it. And he said he didn't think it was a good idea to have to be trying to get uh, fire trucks in and out of the air on, on, a, on a dead end dirt road. Uh, that she is, in essence, a single lane road. Um, the next thing, if you'll look there on page 7, are some photographs that were taken Sunday afternoon that show uh, the gullies and washouts just as a result of the rain Friday and Saturday. And you can see what the condition there is on the bottom of page 8. If you look at it, you can see how far to the right that you have to get to not uh, be in the way and to avoid other traffic. The rest of the photographs uh, show the traffic patterns and can show that even though it's, a, uh, it's wider than one single vehicle, everybody drives in the middle of the road um, because that's just a safe place to be. In, in essence, it is being used as a single road. And as you get down to it, further down the road, pictures 14, 15, and 16 show the end of the road. It's not like there's a cul-de-sac down there. It's just dead ends right in the woods. And uh, you got to make about a three or four or five point turn to get up, just to get a pickup truck turned around out there. The, uh, the, the bottom line when you get to all this is that, as I said, as I pointed out, what the, what the ULDC requires is a paved road for this to be done. Uh, what this is is obviously a dirt road, and um, you're asked, or you're being asked to go from a give a variance for a road that at a minimum is two lanes, paved, can have 55 mile an hour uh, speed limit on it, to a dirt road, 35 miles an hour, single uh, single lane, with 115 of the traffic count on it. So this, as I said, this is not have a slight variance in what's being requested, this is almost, for, in all practical purposes, sort of ignoring what the ULDC requires and what the, uh, what the thoroughfare uh, requirements require. So, uh, you know, with that in mind, we just ask that you all respectfully consider the opposition to it, and I'm sure that you'll consider the, the proponents of the, of the change. Anybody any questions? Any questions, anybody? I was just going to ask, I don't, I don't know if you know or maybe Carmela knows or somebody, how often is this road maintained? Um, I'm sure Mr. McDonald or somebody can say, I do know that I think this past Thursday it was graded, but I don't know how quick, how, how often that's been done. It still needs to. How much property are you at with actually representing across on the north side? Uh, 350 acres. Do you have any feel for what future use y'all would be using this for? Hopefully for farm and, and, uh, and timber. Okay. Keeping it 
the status quo. Okay. Thank you very much. Any, any, any other questions? questions? Any comments? Does anyone have any idea about the average um, length of time that in that particular area? Well, um, our family's been there since 1853. Uh, I know the McDonald's have been there forever. The, the, the Scruggs, who are on the Northwest, they've been there forever. Uh, my cousin Nancy's up here from Florida. Her, her party, property is part of family property that's been there forever. Uh, most people are long-term residents or long-term people in that in that shallow community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Is there anyone else would like to speak from the opposition or somebody has any questions that have not been answered, answered or questions that have not been asked? Please come to the lecture and give me your name and address. My name is Sarah Colton, and I live at um, 5807 McDonald Road, right across the street from the property. Um, I'm going to appeal to you not as anyone with any great knowledge of all the legalities that's going on here, but as a wife and a mother, and um, as a nurse and a teacher. So I understand the needs of the facility that's coming in greatly. But as a wife and a mother, I am scared today. Um, we have not lived there long, only two years, but we planned on living there the rest of our lives. We love the property, it's a beautiful area. Um, we bought the property because we um, thought it would be safe for our family and thought it would be safe for our children to run and play and be in the outdoors, and we love it. Um, but this facility coming in is, is not going to allow us to do that. Um, we will have to move, there's no question. Um, I understand that the road is what we're talking about, and um, I will do anything I can to prevent this facility coming in. Um, if it's a heartfelt thing, that's, that's all I have. But um, I will not feel comfortable. And I did speak with Miss um, Troop myself. Um, she told me it was 18 to 20 year old males. She did tell me that there would be a lot of community involvement. She wanted to have rodeos on the property, um, things like that, coming in and out constantly. Um, I did some digging myself on her and her um, her nonprofit, and it was incorporated just in 2014. She has only done this for a year and a half. Um, she has no facilities like this yet. She's only done some veterans organizations and she has a facility in Alabama for um, handicapped children. But this is the only place that she is even looking into doing something like this. This is new. So even she does not know how this is going to pan out in this area. Um, and I just, I would ask that you would respectfully consider the position that I come in as a mother and a wife and living on a property and um, as a woman being there by myself and feeling comfortable with um, new people, young men and women possibly, that are coming in and out of this property um, every six months around my children, around my family, um, getting on and off the bus by themselves, I don't feel comfortable with this. All right. Any questions? Any comments? You mentioned buses. Do buses come down the road? There is a bus that comes down the road. I cannot um, pass it. Usually I'll have to pull off for them to, to come on if they do pass. The uh, bus does access the road. Are you talking about Lounge County School? Yes. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Joe, I would take just a minute. My name is uh, Joe Tillman. I live at 5843 McDonald Road. Uh, our family and the McDonald family have been out there forever, over 100 years. Um, I personally moved out there about 15 years ago uh, because I wanted to be in the country. Uh, we like it as quiet. Uh, the dirt road is a one road, one way road, period. There's no way two cars can go up and down that road going 30 miles an hour. They wreck. Uh, there have been numerous occasions of people falling into the ditches. Uh, we've even seen Mr. Parker in the ditch. It's just not uh, the type of road that's supposed to be according to the code. And our family, uh, we've talked to everybody, and uh, we would prefer to keep it status quo. All right. Any questions? Any discussion?
discussions for Joe? Anyone else like to speak? My name is uh, Ken Robinson. I'm here for a golf drive in Lake Park, Georgia. Sarah, who's my daughter, was grandchildren of mine. And I take them to my heart. But that's not my question. <clears throat> Anytime something like this happens, there's always a question all of the money. Where is the money coming from? I would like to understand where this lady is getting the money to do this. Where is it coming from? What will support those children? Our young people at this level. It's a grant funded from private investors. Private investors or taxpayers? Mm -hmm. Private investors. Are you sure? Uh, that answers my question. All right. I'm only speaking on the McDonald thing. Um, I'm, my name is Leon McDonald, speaking 904 McDonald Road. We all, all the way down on the west side, and all the way back up, McDonald Road, just about uh, one end of the other. And we've been living out there for over 100 years, and, uh, well, my family has. But, uh, you know, we don't want, we already got a lot of traffic, you know. We don't want a whole bunch of more traffic on that road. And we sure don't want it paved out there. Well, that's going to increase the traffic. So anything we can do, just get this in nip, you know, before it gets out of hand, we would like to do it. All right. Do you have any questions? Anything else? Thank you, sir. Anyone else before we talk about this a few minutes? <coughs> okay, my first concern, and this is the first I have seen or heard or thought about this, because it is not a county road, either as a lawyer or staff somewhere, is there any validity in the question that's been put before us that because it is not a county road, does that preclude us being able to act on this request in some fashion or does that open the county up because we have acted on something that's not proper in some form. Yes, sir, and what I need. Where, where I'm going with this is I'm wondering if we need to consider postponing for 30 days or whatever until the next regular scheduled meeting to make sure we're on good solid ground on this before we act, which, whichever way we might act. Right, right. I did contact the county engineer, and he says, yes, the county has authority on the script of easements. We maintain it. It is a county-maintained public road. So, yes, you will have authority. Anybody want to put something out? Currently, the zoning that is on this property already, could the Barkers sell it in five acre lots? <coughs> Actually, the RA zoning will allow you two and a half acre lots. So, potentially at the five acres that are at least most properties out there, a minimum of five acres, another 29 people could be on this road versus 15 that is being proposed, so, correct, without yes. any rezoning at all done. Well, looking at the map, that entire road, with the exception of the dead end, is RA, two and a half acre minimum. And at the dead end is R1 zoning, which will allow for one acre. So another than 58 people could be living there instead of 15 if they so chose. Carmela, if they develop this into a subdivision with one or two and a half acre lots, would that bump it up on the rest for the county to pay? Actually, the county, with the creation of an 
these five additional lots on any given property, the county engineer will require paving. Um, with this, if the potential buyer of this, once they buy, can they? What what is the minimum acreage that this type of that this type of facility can go on? Could they buy it and then subdivide it and build more of these facilities on the subdivided lots? They would have to ask for a variance, of course, um, because the roads, you know, still classified as a local road. Right. Uh, I thought you had said that on originally. I had thought I had kind of asked that question. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. So. This 146 acres, they can add simply by dividing the property. They can add more of these types of facilities to this property. They can if a variance is granted. Okay. For each time For that each they, time they do, do this. this. Yes. This this variance would be for this particular use only, and if they if they differed from that use, in this case, maximum 15. If they were going to cookie cutter it somewhere else, each time they cookie cutter it, they have to come back before this board. Only for the road. Right. At this point, it would only be for the road. Only for the road. Even if they subdivide it, only for the road. Only for the road. They'll be all the standard. If a variance were considered by the board, can we limit it to this number of people on the, on the 140 acres, that they could not expand it? You can, yes. You can put any type of condition uh, as long as it's in the best interest of the community. Okay. But the downside to that is whoever owns the property could feel that we've erred in that judgment and then want to sue to overturn it so that they can do other things with the property, correct? Okay? They can, they can challenge. They can, they can challenge. If they want it to, they can. Yes, they can. Any other questions, any other discussion? Well, I just want to say one thing. Um, when we consider um, variances, we don't consider the use. What we're considering is there something special about this property that makes it be different. And um, in this case, the thing that makes it be different is that it's on a dirt road rather than a paved road. And so that's, you can't really consider what the end use is. You consider, is it appropriate to have whatever the use is on this dirt road? Questions, any other discussion? I have a question. Ma'am, hold on just a second. Uh, well, okay, one question before we get too far off, off track. My name is Linda Guy. I live at 12 Farmington Court, and I'm here as a Lowndes County taxpayer. And my question is, if there's only 15 children there and it takes 100 acres per child and if that's only benefiting 15 children and someone's paying that much money for that piece of property, they're planning on doing something else for that piece of property. It is logical what's being brought up. Well, that is not something that we really take into on consideration here and now. But for the but use of the road it is, for and for that variance it is, because even if you've got these children there, most of them are under state programs. They're under defects. Even though they're 18, they're under some type of program. And each one of those children will have a caseworker to travel that road. They will have counselors to travel that road. And if they're supposed to be taught <coughs> life skills, they're going to be taken into job interviews, they're going to be taken into doctor's appointments, and it's usually a, a caseworker that does that. Each one of those 15 children will have two to three people transporting them. But my thought is, that's too much 
land for 15 children and not for that expense to go on that road and nothing else be expected to be beaten that road, especially a road road. And thank you. Thank you. Any discussion do we feel like anybody feel like we need to consider postponing for more information potentially? I'm puzzled, Mr. Stevens, as to why this particular piece of land is what she wants. If she can do what she needs to do on a minimum of 50 acres. And even if it were approved, she's going, it's going to be wear and tear on vehicles coming up and down that road. I don't understand what is so unique about this piece of property if all she needs is 50 acres when you can ride the roads in Williams County and see parcels of land for this that would meet her needs. Yeah, um, and again, I said that, and I don't know why she liked this property. <clears throat> Again, she approached us, um, and she may have been looking at other properties. I do not know, and I cannot say one way or another. Um, all I know is, you know, that we're here now because that's what she wanted to do. And again, I don't know how the board feels, but I have a lot of reservations about getting my answers through you. It almost becomes hearsay instead of being able to talk to her directly. If this is such an important project, why isn't she here? Right, and she she lives in Ohio, um, and she actually did send a letter and said, you know, she'd want to be here, but again, she's not going to buy the property if she can't do what she wants to do with it, which is the whole reason that we're going through this. Uh, so, but we kind of like to do it on her behalf to have to live here, uh, kind of as a courtesy. But, you know, she, she would want to be here, but again, it's a long trip or something may not happen. You know, so, but look, look at her perspective. Anything else? Any other questions, discussion, before I call the question? Can I get a motion on this request? I make a motion to deny the request. I have a motion on the floor to deny. Is so there a second? I have a second. So, Mr. Alvarado, the motion for the record. All in favor, please raise a hand. Sorry, it was turned down. Thank you. Thank you.
um, have trouble meeting setback requirements. Back in 2006, this entire section of North Lake subdivision was granted variances to the setback requirements, and it was conditioned that these houses have double car um, garages and that they meet the front and side yard setback. They were granted three yard variances back in 2006. Well, the property or this section is just about built out with the exception of these corner lots. So these are the last of corner lots in this section that they're requesting a variance to that side road to go from 23 feet to 17 feet so they can build the double car port and to have houses that are similar to what's already out here. So I looked at this and ultimately we recommended approval. Um, we saw some of the houses um, that Variances were granted for last summer, and they, they look pretty good. All right, and in case some of us may not remember, the reason that we put the stipulation for the two-car garage was to try to limit on-street parking out there in this area and, and causing a lot of congestion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is anyone here in support of this application? Would you like to speak? <laughs> I'm Nathan Smith, uh, a realtor representing the Baskets in this issue. Naturally, we're for it. I think uh, Carmelo said it all. I guess I'm just here to answer any questions. If there's any questions, any questions? I don't have any questions, but I have to get this off my chest because it bugs me every time. Uh, why, when the project was laid out, we knew what the side yard and backyard setbacks were going to be? One house less on the street could have made the lots be big enough. But we knew that when we laid it out. Why didn't we do that? I don't know. You know, the original developer was, uh, I think, Gerald Evans, and I don't know. It, it looks like they just did a standard setback for every lot. And because these are on the corners, see the interior I'm, lots. I'm, I'm, I'm totally I, mean, I don't know why. I wasn't there. Saying, you know, that, that seems to me like an ask forgiveness later problem. That when we made our thing, we put it up the lots, and now we have to come and say, and the other thing is, Carmel, why didn't we do them all at once last summer? These weren't <laughs> under contract last summer. They could have gotten married on them all at once. It was under contract at all. Well, that, that's right. A lot, a lot of times, the, you know, the, the owner doesn't want to, you know, spend all the money until there's a need, you know, until somebody wants to buy it because there's an application fee and all that. But, I don't know. Carmel, you said this is almost exactly the same request as what's different this time over last time. It, there's no difference. If you look at the um, site drawing, they use the exact same site drawing. Um, on the flat itself, it calls for 23 foot setback, and they're requesting. Um, yeah, see, most all the interior lots, you know, have six, six foot setbacks on each side. So basically, and they're 60 foot wide. So you can build a house 48 foot wide. But because these are corner lots, you know, and that they got, if you've got to put the house in on the interior of the cul de sac, and then you would only have, if we don't get the variance, you have 23, 6, 29, you can only build a 31 five foot wide house, and that's impossible. Put a two car garage in that. So that's, that's and, and my point just remains that's when right. they made these lots at the start, they should have remembered that they were going to be corner lots. We do a better job on this corner than we're going to be giving some vision. Look, how y'all can y'all do these setbacks. When they come to us, we, we do a better job. Okay. Is this the last of the corner lots that have to be dealt with on this property? I believe so. I believe those are, okay. this, this will be all of them. Yeah, this is it. Everybody, please understand, it is a learning curve. Okay, any questions, any discussion? Is anyone here in opposition to this request? Was he in contact to your office, Carmella? Yes, there was. We received a phone call today from a resident. She didn't say where she lived, uh, but she's in opposition. She thinks the houses are close enough. Uh, she just the Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any other further discussion? Can I get a motion on this request? I make a motion to approve signing the criteria D and G and sign out. I have motion, Mr. McCall, to grant the request as presented, signing criteria.
criteria C, D, and G is what was in C there. and G. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second from the file. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, we can go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Make it feel good, please. Okay, approval of the minutes. I read them, didn't see anything. Did anybody see anything out here? Oh. Can I get a motion to accept? So move. Um, I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Second. Nancy Taylor's a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous, thank you very much. The only. <coughs> Uh, any new business, any old business that we need to talk about other than the IDs, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, last month, it was requested by the board to me to please contact Larry Hanson and Joe Pritchett. I contacted each one of them and talked to them and explained that we would, I personally apologize for the fact that all of the discussions originated with badges, not ID of some kind. And uh, both of them were receptive. Larry Hansen said an email me, and I forgot to print it off and bring it before I came. Uh, Chief Childress has the capability or some other department. Uh, whatever, to make a little thing in it, a little plate, and it will have your picture on it, and it'll say, Valdosta is only for the field volunteer. Uh, so as not to make it look like it is an official something, which is pretty much what Joe Pritchard has, when he talked with me, he said he was going to talk to you, but he said he didn't think he had a problem with it. Uh, Originally, they were talking about they would have a one-year life, at which point you would have to go and do it again. And my only suggestion is, if we're going to do this, that we get it for the term of the person, instead of having to go every year and get it renewed, it would be for your term. And if you were reappointed, then you would have to get a new one at that point. Uh, and that's where we stand right now. Um, so, they have to just work on getting pictures of you all or the head shot. <laughs> Young at heart. Young at heart. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so at this point, I think it's doable. We just will have to push a little bit more and make sure that everybody is is on board, but right now appears to be on board. <coughs> Any other business or anything we need to talk about? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your assistance. We are adjourned. Can you please call Mark's right? You have so much more influence than I do.